Okay, we're at a Chase Bank and I just picked up three of these bad boys. That's $75 in pennies and we're gonna see how much money you can make selling old pennies. Okay, I wanna preface this by saying I don't know what I'm doing. I've only watched like 10 YouTube videos and looked in a few forums. And so when I went to my bank, they told me that these were just rolled up and they're, they're circulated pennies and they probably haven't been searched through. At my bank, they said the half dollars get searched through all the time, but not the penny so much. So I got these and some, uh, some other ones, but we're doing these first. And what I believe I should look for is wheat pennies, any sort of misprints, and that means there's like two of the mint marks or any sort of damaging or just uh, not how it's supposed to look. And that's not from wear. That's the way it was manufactured was uh, incorrect. People like to buy those. Great condition. And then I also had a category for S mint marks because I read that if they have an S mint mark after 1974, that means they're a proof, although they may not be in perfect condition. So these two might actually be the same, the same thing. I'm not sure. I'm not expecting to make any money at all. Uh, I'll also be taking aside the pennies made uh, 1982 or earlier because those are copper and they're worth like three cents. And even though you can't melt down pennies now, um, it's going to be, it's only a matter of time before the laws about these pennies not being destroyed are going to be taken off the books. And then I'll have, depending on the value of copper, you know, two or three times my initial investment and they're pennies. So it's not like nobody's going to be stealing 9,000 pounds of pennies. But what I'm gonna do is just, um, I'm gonna go through these, show you the winners, and then afterwards, in a, in a different video probably, sh sell them. I'm gonna just give you the estimate for what I think I have in the first video, and then as I take them to a coin collector, or sell them on eBay, or whatever I do, then that's gonna be part two of this video. And if it's fun, I'm gonna do some more of these. So buckle up guys, let's go. Let's get to this first one right here. They're taped shut. Open this up. Whoops, that's the way they had to be up front. And here they are. Pennies. <laughs> lots and lots of pennies. Look at this! This is so cool! I just opened up the first roll and there's already a wheat penny right on top. It's uh... 1956. How cool is that? Right away, a winner. I don't think it's worth anything because it's in pretty bad condition, but still, pretty cool. Here's my fourth roll, and I found a really nice looking 1967 penny that I think might be a proof. This is our fifth roll. I don't know if you can see it, but I do. Right there, we got another wheat penny, and it's from... 1944. We're getting into our sixth or seventh roll, and I saw it when I un when I unrolled it right there. 1953. And then next to it is this one from Canada, and it's uh, 1961. Going through this roll, and I found one. It's really beat up. You can't even tell, but it's 1940. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just about a smooth surface. It's been a drought. As you can see, we're uh, done with the first row of this $25 box. I've got four wheat pennies, a bunch of Canadians. And then these are ones I thought were all just in nice condition. I don't know much about coins, but they were shiny. Anyways, I found another wheat penny right there. It's, uh, let's see, let me turn it over. 1958. I think I got my favorite one so far. Right there in 1968 out of Denver. A penny and it's got a really nice luster to it. I don't know if it's valuable at all, but I like it. Halfway through our first box and we have one right there, 1951 wheat penny. Right next to it's, uh, let's see, what is that, 1971. Kind of slowing down, but we've still got a lot more pennies to go through. We're almost to the first box. That many left. 
but still two boxes right here. And I wanted to show you this penny right here. I ended up getting one of my um, little wallet magnifying cards right here. So you can see a little bit better. Uh, kind of obscures the light though. But this one, uh, it's a little bit off print, a little bit off center. So I'm gonna pull it aside because I don't exactly know what, uh, if this is enough of a, um, a misprint to be worth money or if it's just kind of a little novelty for me to look at. Down to our last five or six rolls in this box and I found another one. There was like a 25 roll drought right here. And then the year is 1952. Maybe there's some more. We got back to back winners. Right there, there's one. Definitely a wheat penny. Let's see the year. 1946 D. Second to last roll in the first box and we've got our ninth wheat penny, 1956. Right there. What I ended up doing too is the ones that are really shiny, I just put over here and maybe I'll put together a, a set for fun. Uh, the ones that are copper are going in this jar, or well, this bucket I mean. And then uh, the ones that are not valuable are going in here and they're gonna get taken back to the bank. Here's all the Canadian ones. I'm gonna run those up in a minute once I finish this last roll and we're gonna see what happened for this first $25 box. Okay, I, uh, I've gone through the first box of pennies. It's empty and kind of interesting results. So there was 2,500 pennies in there. Out of those 2,500 pennies, 32 were Canadian. So I'm already in the whole 12 cents because of the exchange rate. Nine of those 2,500 pennies uh, are wheat pennies, so not the best odds. 32 of them are in good condition pennies that I think are, they're kind of bright and they range from um, 1964 until I stopped at 1990. There are eight pennies with interesting toning on them that I'm pulling aside to see if I can sell them maybe. And then there's 495 copper pennies, 1982 or earlier. And that equates to $8.79 uh, in copper melt value. So just about 80% more, uh, just guessing the math. We're gonna have two more of these to go. So what I'm gonna do is put these that I have away somewhere safe so they don't get lost or messed up or marked up. And then um, I'm gonna go through the next two boxes. Box number two. Zwei. Dos. A lot of pennies. I got a feeling a lot of them are gonna be bad. Maybe I'll get nine or 10 good ones. I don't know, the numbers are not in my favor. Let's start looking. This is our third or fourth roll in the second box. Do you see it? I'm going towards it, do you see it yet? Right there, 1954 penny. Denver, one cent. United States of America. I found another one right there. Just off dumping them out, 1952. That's a wheat penny. Okay, it's day two. This is taking a lot longer than I thought. I think I'm already up to about four or five hours of going through pennies. And uh, I've been through, I don't know, a third of the box and I have one more box left. But I just found a penny and I want to show it to you. This is gonna be my first one of the day. You can hardly tell it is. And the year is, oh boy, 1945 and it's beat up. I bet it's been about 4,000 pennies and I think I finally found my first proof. S mint mark 1972, right there. It's not in very good condition, but it's still a S mint mark and I believe that means the proof. Correct me if I'm wrong. This box is giving me barely any, any wheat pennies, but right there, 
There's one. Let's see what year it is. Oh, an old one, 1919. Definitely the oldest one I've got yet. I mean, by, by two decades. I haven't gotten even in the 30s yet. Box two is box two's done. It was not good. Out of the 2,500 pennies I went through, 24 Canadian, only six wheat pennies. That's really, I think that's really bad. I don't know, but I think that's terrible. 507 were copper uh, between the US and Canadian pennies. So that's slightly more than the first box. And then 30 of them were interesting enough. They were really old and in good condition. Um, there's like a few like this one. I think, well, you saw it already, but like this 1969 one's really shiny. You can't really tell, but you can tell the luster. Uh, on an old coin, it's kind of cool. Um, the one S mint, which I think is a proof. Again, I'm not totally sure. But really, the, what it's looking like is uh, that I'm not gonna make very much money on this. We have one box left. I'm gonna go through that over the next two hours or so, and uh, then the video is gonna be done. This is the last box, and I think now would be a good time to share with you a few of the things I've learned over the course of doing this. These rolls are rolled up by a machine. These are not hand rolled despite being uh, paper, so I think people are pouring coins into, the, into these coin star machines at banks maybe, um, or else Chase Bank has some sort of machine that does this. So I think what I will do next time is go to a different bank, because I want coins that individuals rolled up themselves. Um, so maybe I'll go to a small little hick town and try it again. Uh, it, this is good for the copper harvesting, but not so good for looking for big winners, which might even be just a crazy thing to think in the first place. I don't know. Fourth roll of this uh, third box. Nope, that's not it, it's right here. Bingo. What year do you think it is? Nineteen forty. None of the thirties, none of the twenties, just the nineteen oh nine, and uh, and a few in the forties, and some in the fifties too. Six box in, and do you see what I? Oh, oh, is there two? Oh my God, there's two, right there. 1953 and 1944. Man, back to back. Some old ones in there. 66, 44, 53. That 44 is not in bad condition, you know, compared to the rest at least. One more right there, an S mark, 1969. This penny right here caught my attention because the T, the, the S and T in God We Trust is not really there and it doesn't seem to be lined up uh, with the wear on the rest of the penny. So I'm curious if that's a grease strike. I don't think so. I think I'm just kind of grasping at straws, but um, it's something I'm not sure about. So I'm gonna have to, you know, hold this and do some more research. I'd say we're about 15 in, and you, yeah, you see it, it's right there. Whoa, what do we think it is? 1940. A 1940 penny right there. We're going down into the last few boxes, or the last few rolls in the last box, and I got another uh, S coin right there. That's, a, that's definitely a proof. This is the first one I can say for sure. Man, that looks nice. 1969 out of San Francisco. This is great. So literally, and as long as it took me to uh, basically put my phone down, I found one more. 1957, which is a wheat penny. Yep. Add to the stack. One more. This box is way better than the last one. Nineteen forty-five. You know I've been saying nothing in the thirties. Well, tell me when you see it. 
Now do you see it? Boom. Right there, 1937. We have another one. Right there. 1942. Five coin rolls left, and I found one more wheat penny right there, and it showed backside up, so we're gonna see a reveal. Huh! 1957. You see that? I can see it. 1957 Denver. Another reveal. Let's see what it is. 1950. Out of Denver. They're all finished. All 7,500 pennies minus the ones I took out are right here. This last box was 29 Canadian, 10 wheat pennies, 28 keepers, and 508 copper. There may actually have only been eight wheat pennies. I did the math again after I wrote these down. I think I messed up. So actually eight wheat pennies, but everything else is good. I'm gonna show you now the totals for what I got. So I got 700, or sorry, 700, 7,500 pennies. Out of those, 23 were wheat pennies. That is 0 0.0, sorry, 0.306667%. That's not a very good find rate. One, uh, 1,510 were 95% copper pennies. And that's about a 20% find rate, 20.1333, repeating uh, infinitely. So one in five. So out of those 1,510 pennies, that is worth 2575 to 2669 in copper. I was saying, well, why don't you know exactly what it's worth in copper? That's because the pennies have worn down, and uh, the way I measured them was by saying, okay, a penny's like three grams, basically three grams. So I'm just kind of using the average. So it's between 2575 is going to be the low end, and 2669 is going to be the high end melt value. That's $15.10 in pennies because pennies are worth a penny each. Uh, into 26.22 in copper, which is $11.12 profit. And I have profit in quotation marks because it's illegal to melt down pennies. <laughs> the whole premise of this uh, is, a, is felonious. Um, so until a president says, yeah, pennies are dumb, they're a waste of money, uh, melt them down, we're kind of just holding on to that. Now, if we were to sell them on the second hand on, on like eBay or a Facebook marketplace flip, we could expect to get uh, about s half this, about $6.50, or sorry, about $5.50. So we'd, we could sell these pennies, this bucket of pennies right here, I could sell those for about 20 bucks to someone who is preparing for the impending financial meltdown and, uh, and, and hoarding copper pennies. Um, my hourly rate is two dollars and two cents. So that's five hour, five and a half hours for doing this. I got faster as the time went on, but initially I was going very slow. So uh, copper wise, two dollars and two cents. Then plus whatever I can get for the coins themselves. Here are all the coins I got. So these are 1982, or sorry, 1959 pennies right there. A stack of them. These are 82s. These are 81s that are all in relatively good condition. Um, I think probably I'm just gonna uh, throw them in the, the melt bucket unless I see something that jumps out at me because there's not really a market for this era of pennies in good condition. These are all from the 70s starting earliest 1971 going across to uh, 79 at the end. I think probably the best condition out of these might be one of these two right there, the 72 or the 73. Um, but again, I do not believe they're worth really any money. So what I think I'll do is just buy a penny book and put these in there, uh, the 70s and the 80s. I don't really care about the earlier ones, but I, maybe I should start doing that. I don't know. These are all pennies I thought had interesting toning on them uh, from being exposed to sulfur or whatever. This looked like a Band-Aid came across it almost. Uh, this had a piece of tape over it. This one just looks very nice. And it's also the year I was born, so I pulled it out. And this one was exceptionally shiny uh, as well. It's got a gold toning to it. I don't know if you can tell based on my camera. Here's the wheat pennies spanning three decades. 
The earliest is uh, 1937, all the way to the 50s, up to, uh, let's see, the latest year we have is 1958, which is gonna be the last year they made wheat pennies. Nothing here is that jumps out really. This one's okay. This 1944 is, is kind of, has its coppery shimmer to it, but most of them are just brown and, uh, and kind of gross looking. I'll have to examine these again for errors or um, any sort of things that shouldn't be where they are. But again, I don't I don't expect to make any money off of these. Uh, I don't know what the going rate for wheat pennies is. What I think I'll do is get maybe a hundred of them, or uh, or maybe uh, five hundred of them. You know, over the course of however long I do this, and then auction those off at a local auction uh, because shipping would just would tear apart any money you could make on um, on pennies on eBay. So uh, I think really what you're looking for when you're doing coin roll hunting like this is, is winners worth like a couple hundred bucks because the individual pennies are not really that valuable. These are all 1960s pennies that I thought were in very good condition. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they are actually in good condition or if I'm just, you know, over my, I've only seen 7,500 pennies. So I, compared to the rest of those, these are the best. Uh, 1961 that 1969s is right here and I think this is probably the best condition penny between you know the the age and um, how it looks now I think that one is in the best condition it's got the s mint mark so it's from San Francisco and I believe I mean it's a proof but still unless I had this graded it's not really worth that much at all. The conclusion of this is coin roll hunting for pennies a way to make money. Yeah, it is, but it's a bad way. This falls squarely in the hobbies that pay you, not, you know, ways to make money like a job. No one has a career out of going to the bank and picking out pennies and selling them. And if they do, they are exceptionally lucky. That's the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, leave a comment, and give it a thumbs up. And if you like these videos, weird ways to make money, let me know. I don't think I would do this on my own volition again, but if you guys like this, I'll make more videos of it. I'll make 10 more videos and we'll have a big series and then we'll move on to the next weird way to make money. What do you think? Let me know.